Point, friends, South Point friends and family, we're so glad you're here tonight uh, to check in and see what's going on. Uh, we are trying all kind of new tools and technology, and so um, as we hang out tonight, uh, on the odd chance that something uh, disconnects, go ahead and refresh your browser, come back to the Facebook page, and choose the Facebook Live at the very top. How are we feeling, Matt? Feeling good. Fired up and ready to go. Just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. Yep. So, hey, uh, Sunday, we uh, tried this whole church online thing, yep. and uh, it was pretty crazy. Conservatively, somewhere around 3,000 people uh, showed up to, to online church. We had uh, great worship from our team. Pastor Matt shared an encouraging message. And uh, better than that, like uh, 300 people were chatting it up in the, in the uh, chat section. 60 people I uh, got prayed for one-on-one. -on -one. And so, uh, man, the church... Is going to keep on going. Church isn't canceled, is it? Yeah. Uh, you know, the great thing is in this season, um, the church doesn't stop being a church just because we don't meet in a building, uh, because the church is a group of people that loves its community. And so here at South Point, we're deeply committed to loving our community and being engaging. And so we just want to say thanks to all of our volunteers uh, that helped us pull off uh, Sunday online, and we're excited about this Sunday. Yep. Well, hey, uh, whether you are from uh, the Leonardtown campus, the Lusby campus, or you've never heard of South Point until you clicked on this button, uh, man, we're so glad you're here. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm the, the lead pastor, sorry, the campus pastor over at the Lusby campus. This is Matt. He's the lead pastor of all things South Point, or uh, the overlord, as he makes us call him here at the office. And um, we're just going to hang out tonight and keep it casual and conversational. We really want you to use the, the chat on the side. Uh, and share a little bit about what's going on. And so let's test that out uh, in the chat section right now. Uh, use one word to describe how it's going so far for you. Um, if it feels like a vacation, um, if you're one of those parents who all of a sudden has kids at home and, and got an unexpected summer break and you want to say words that you shouldn't say on the Facebooks, pick a different word. Uh, <laughs> but, but tell us how you're feeling uh, today. How are you feeling, Matt? Um, I'm excited. Um, you know, I know that things are really different right now. Um, I know that people are worried and scared. Um, I know there's a lot of uncertainty, um, but I do know that this is not a surprise to God and that God loves us and cares for us. Um, and this is an opportunity for us as a group of followers of Jesus uh, to be able to love each other and to love our community. So um, while there is some uncertainty, I think there's a great opportunity for us uh, to, to be Jesus to the community around us. And so that, uh, that excites me that we can actually bring honor to Jesus in this situation. Yep, great. And uh, it really has been exciting to see people engage on uh, different social media platforms. And people are getting obviously creative. They have more time on their hands. And uh, out of that time and creativity comes some hilarious memes. And so, you know what? I would love to see, uh, you know, while pa Pastor Matt's sharing, you can just take a minute and find your favorite meme that you've saved in your, uh, your photo roll. And uh, if you'll share that in our, in our chat section, at the end, we'll pick a couple of our favorites and give away some Dunkin' gift cards. Uh, please keep it clean, you know, PG-13, and uh, you know, let's have some fun together. And, and I might add, maybe you could add the meme after uh, I share a little bit, maybe not exactly while I'm sharing, Kyle. That would, that would, be, sure. that would, that would be great. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, just a, a quick kind of uh, idea of where we're going tonight. Uh, Pastor Matt's going to share a quick recap of Sunday morning in case you missed it. Um, which, by the way, if you missed it, Jen's going to share a link to uh, the Sunday morning message. You can catch it there. Um, we're also going to dig a little bit deeper in that. And um, you know, just ask the question, if you had more time, what would you, what would you say uh, to us? And then um, we're going to open the floor and let you ask questions. And so um, in between looking for funny memes, uh, if you'll let us know, you know, do you have any questions about what's going on, um, about how we're handling this as a church, about what you can do uh, in this season? That'd be a great place for you to ask that. And at the end, we'll come back and, uh, and talk about those things. So uh, all that said, Pastor Matt, uh, take us back to Sunday yeah. and uh, tell us a little, little bit, like 90 seconds, what was yeah. uh, Sunday morning about? Yeah, um, the overview for Sunday and really the whole idea behind this sermon series, Kyle, uh, Anxious for Nothing, is, is that for some reason in the church community, uh, that anxiety is seen as bad, wrong, and maybe even sinful. And the whole idea of the series was to let people know that feeling anxious is absolutely normal and it's not a sin. Um, but that God addresses anxiety and worry and fear on a regular basis because he knows it's something that we're going to deal with. 
And so kind of the big takeaway from Sunday was is anxiety is a signal, not a state of being. And it's a signal to engage God. And so you can check that out on our YouTube channel and then our other resources or our website. So that was kind of the overarching view uh, to make people realize that it is a normal part of life. Okay, awesome. Uh, we asked the question, you know, after the message, what did you hear? And it sounds like that, that uh, quick little phrase of uh, worry is an indicator, not a dictator. Yep. Um, that it's a signal to, to pray or to engage yeah. God. And, and so I think that was really helpful. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Uh, so, you know, Sunday morning, attention spans are smaller because we're, we're watching online. We're not necessarily sitting in a service. Yep. And so you kind of condense things down. Um, but if you had a few extra minutes, um, can you kind of unpack that a little bit more and tell us a little yeah. bit more about this idea? Yeah, I mean, on Sunday mornings, uh, I usually have like a main idea that I'm trying, I believe that God has asked me to communicate, and I really try to focus all the material kind of around that main idea. And so, like you said, we were trying something new. We wanted to make sure uh, that it was concise. And so um, today and Wednesdays is kind of an idea to go, hey, while on Sunday we kind of had this main focus, maybe on Wednesday evenings we could get together. Since we can't get together um, as a large group, um, we could broaden our scope and take a look a little bit more about what we talked on Sunday in this series called Anxious for Nothing. Um, and so that's kind of the idea of today is to broaden it and take a little bit of a look. And so I want to kind of remind everyone, if you weren't there on Sunday, didn't see it, that is a-okay. Um, we actually are passages from Philippians, and I want to read it really quickly to you. Um, and it's kind of the whole core of the next several weeks. And it's this, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I'll say it again. Remember how Mama used to tell us, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here's where it gets really awesome. It says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so kind of Sunday, what we kind of talked about was, is listen, um, that when we live in the prison of what ifs, um, that we usually make unwise decisions. And so we don't want to live in the prison of what ifs so that we don't end up making poor decisions. And so we want God's peace to be able to guard our hearts and our minds. And I think in this season, um, that might be pretty true of all of us right now. And so kind of as I give a nugget, Kyle, one of the things that I thought of was is um, right in the first thing, it says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And so the Apostle Paul has to tell us something twice because right. I think most of the time um, people aren't necessarily uh, positive. We are um, naturally probably focused on what doesn't go right instead sure. of uh, what does go right. Um, and I think this is where maybe some Christians and Christian circles, we get a little bit, I would call it weird or a little bit crazy um, because we take this verse a little bit out of context. And here's what I mean. If you drop a weight on your foot and break your toe, um, if you get in a car accident, um, if you get laid off your job um, and you've heard Christians go, well, praise the Lord or thank God, you kind of go, well, that seems, that seems awkward. That's a bad thing. And so uh, the amazing thing is the scripture isn't telling us to rejoice in bad. We actually have to read it. Paul is saying, rejoice in the Lord. So it's not the situations that rejoice in. It's in God who's over those situations. As I was thinking about this, one of the things that I want to say is, listen, we're always going to have to deal with our surroundings. We live in a busted and broken world. Uh, Jesus doesn't promise us a past. So here's kind of the idea that we can be joyful that there's a God who is for us and a God who loves us. And listen, we have to deal with our surroundings, but we don't have to let our surroundings define us. And so oftentimes in a season like this where there's uncertainty, maybe there's worry, maybe there's fear, um, we don't know what's happening. Um, we can allow this situation to define us instead of being defined by God's love. And that we don't rejoice in the bad that's happening. We rejoice in that there's a God who is in control of all things. And so if I could have dived a little bit deeper on Sunday morning, that would have been one of the things I said is um, our rejoicing isn't in the bad. It's rejoicing in God's goodness. Uh, the second thing that caught my eye that I would have liked to go on a little bit deeper in is it says, let your gentleness be evident to all. And this is a true statement that when I live in fear, if you live in fear, that when we live in fear, um, it tends, we tend to be a little bit like we tend to hoard, we tend to hide, or we tend to be hostile because we want to protect ourselves. Um, and Paul is reminding us. Now, you have to remember, the Apostle Paul writes what I just read to you from prison where he's standing on trial where he could possibly get the death sentence, which eventually he did. Um, and he says, let your gentleness be evident all. And I think what he's trying to remind us of is Jesus says that when you and I feel the urge 
to be selfishness, to protect, to be hostile, that as followers of Jesus, one of the ways that we love God is by loving our neighbors. Matter of fact, Jesus said, you know, everything can be summed up in two things, love God and love your neighbors. And so that really struck out to me that like, hey, um, when we're anxious, when we're worried, uh, that caring and loving for others uh, can be a little bit difficult. If I can jump in there, I heard this week, my friend Adam uh, say that in a, a concise way. He said, uh, when we feel that urge, we need to serve, not self-preserve. Oh, I like and, that. That's really good. Uh, yeah, you know, that kind of like helps us to refocus on not just meeting my own needs, um, but as, as uh, I help serve others, God will provide for my needs as well. I think you should say that one more time to our audience. That was really good. Ooh, yeah, we want to serve, not self-preserve. Um, and I know for me, you know, I, I just naturally want to make sure my family is, is taken care of, that those I love and, and uh, that those are around me are, are taken care of. Um, but without being, you know, overly um, uh, prosperity gospel you know, I, I really believe this, that as we meet the needs of other people, um, that God also takes care of us. And so I've, I have yeah. found that to be true, that uh, God is faithful. Um, the one thing that I, in the midst of this, Kyle, that I didn't really get to say, but really struck to me was at the end of verse four, uh, five, it says, the Lord is near. Um, and so I hope um, just if you only take one thing away in a couple minutes of our banter um, and trying to engage you and provide is that you would hear this, that the Lord is near, that this situation doesn't surprise God. Um, he isn't going, what is going on? Um, God was here before this. God is here during this and God will be here after this. Um, and the Apostle Paul, even in prison, even under maybe the penalty of the death sentence, um, knows that this is a true statement, that God is near. And when God is near, we can do more when God is with us than we can do alone. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking about, do you remember when you were a kid and you wanted to have a sleepover? Do you ever remember that? Sure. Like, yeah. And sometimes you knew that your mom and dad didn't want you to have a sleepover. Mm -hmm. uh, so what did you do? Uh, you always asked your friend to go with you to go <laughs> ask mom and dad, yeah, right? Because sure, yeah. what you thought was, if I got my friend right there, then it's gonna be harder for mom and dad to say no. Um, and you felt better about making that ask because your friend was with you. Um, and there's something about being in hardship that when we have someone with us, um, that it makes us um, better able to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is one of the amazing things that I really love about Jesus. Jesus was a truth teller. I mean, Jesus tells us honestly, listen, none of us gets a pass in life, um, but Jesus does promise to be very present um, with us as we go through uh, those problems. And if I was gonna kind of sum up the nugget that I didn't get to share on Sunday that I'd wanna share now um, is this, is that when you, when I, when we realize that God cares and that God is close and near and that God is good. Do you know what it lets us do? It lets us be good, it lets us be caring, and it lets us be close to others regardless of the circumstances around us. And I think in this unprecedented situation, I mean, I was talking to my dad on the phone the other day and he's like, son, I've never ever faced anything like this in my entire life. And I go, neither have I, dad. Um, wouldn't it be great that wherever we're at, um, kind of in our social distancing, um, whether it's through social media, whether it's um, out on a walk or with a neighbor around us, um, that we would uh, follow what these verses say and let the gentleness of God be close to us and for us to care and to love our neighbors. And so that would be a little bit extra that I would have added on Sunday. All right. Well, hey, if you appreciate that, uh, give Matt an amen or a thumbs up in the comments and and let them know uh, how, would, how you know if that was helpful. Um, yeah, in the chat, uh, people shared their words earlier. Uh, you know, how you feeling in one word? Uh, tell us how you feel. And we got stir crazy, nervous, challenging, overloaded, awesome, nerve wracking, restful, tired, hopeful, loving having the kids home, <laughs> apprehensive, yeah. thankful that God's in control. So um, obviously, there's a spectrum there of feelings. Um, but maybe can you share with us, um, and, and uh, as Matt shares this, I want to encourage you, if you have a question that you want us to, to talk about tonight or, or um, a, a specific thing that, that God brought to mind, uh, will you write that in the section in the chat for us? And uh, we'll, we'll talk okay. about it in a minute. But can you talk to us a little bit about, like, you know, if somebody feels like I want to not be anxious, um, I know what I should feel, and, and I, I want to do that, but I get overwhelmed by these feelings yeah. of, of emotion. Yeah, I mean, um, I, as I was thinking about our time today, Kyle, I want to go, hey, we don't want to just like 
um, give big ideas. We actually want to give some practical tips. Sure. And so, um, and I want to say to anyone out there, man, like uh, the extreme of emotions is real. Like uh, you might be fired up in one moment and one moment you might be panicked. And so I want to just go, that's normal. I think one of the things that where we are maybe not in community as much as we normally are, uh, that we can feel isolated. And so we might feel like we're the only ones. And so I just want you to know that you are not alone, uh, that everyone has these swings. And I think, you know, I've got my wife and my kids are home from school. And so we have all the emotions and all the things that were in there. And so um, I, I came up with four things that helps each area of our life, maybe just as a practical tip um, to help us as we navigate this. Um, and the first one is going to sound so simple, Kyle. Like when I say this, you're going to go like, well, duh, like you're, you're going to laugh at me. But I, I would go, uh, the first thing that we can do is simply for our physical bodies is take a walk. Um, like I know that some of us are remotely working. Yeah. I know some of us are actually off from work. Right. Um, I know some of us, our kids are home. Um, and just the science behind going for a physical walk, what it does for our mental state, what it does for our heart, sure. what it does for our health, um, what it does for kind of that, um, when you feel stir crazy, that, that kind of feeling that you get, yeah. um, that a 15 to 30 minute walk, um, the medical benefits both emotionally and physically are just amazing. And so my number one recommendation um, during this season is try to walk regularly. Maybe just every day go, hey, we as a family are going to take a walk. Um, we can have conversation. It'll get our blood moving. It'll clear our heads. And that might be one physical thing uh, to help it's us do. It's a good do. tip too for people that are uh, teleworking. You know, when you work in an office environment, you naturally get up and talk to people and, and do things. But if you're working at home, you might kind of get locked in and and stay sedentary for three, four, five hours at a time. Yeah. So, and, and Harvard did a study. They said that we work best in increments of 45 to 50 minutes and that a walk in between that is the thing that will help you the most. So that's, good. that's a great idea. Um, for mental, uh, this, this is a tough one. I, I came up with lots of ideas, uh, but here was my idea and you may not like it, but uh, take a break from media. Um, I was reading something, and this was so true. Uh, they That's said, a that, "Yeah." Uh, <laughs> here's the thing: is, is that like we can be so connected because maybe we are not in our normal routine. Sure. Um, that we're always having the news on constantly. We're yep. always on our Facebook feed or Instagram, um, and we just get so much bad news. And and you know this, and I know this. But the news companies don't make money by selling good stories. Sure. They make money by kind of selling bad stories. And I'm not saying they're over-exaggerating, but I am saying at some point mentally for our mental health, it might be great to go, hey, I'm going to check it in the morning, I'm going to check it at night, yep. but I'm going to give myself a break away so that I'm not inundated and overwhelmed by that. Yeah, yep. I know uh, like it's exciting to get the, the freshest news, the breaking news story, and as soon as something uh, comes out, you want to be able to share it on social media and stuff. But the reality is like, Everybody else is going to tell you what happened, and so like not much is going to change in an hour or two. And uh, whenever it is that you get back there, you'll find out then. Yeah, and so and then emotionally, I think because God made us, you know, um, intellectual beings. He made us physical beings. He made us emotional beings and spiritual beings. So next, emotionally, like what do we do with our emotions? And this is the thing I really want to recommend highly, Kyle. Is listen, just have some fun, like. Uh, you know what? I made a post on Facebook on Monday about like this is a challenge and it's real and it's significant, sure. um, but it does um, provide some opportunities. Um, my whole family is home. That's that's a rare opportunity. I have two daughters off at of college. Uh, both their classes were canceled. My wife is off of work, um, and it's been a unique opportunity for us to play some family games, for us to do some things that that we wouldn't normally get to do. And so, you know, my encouragement would be have some fun, like. Um, do something with your family, um, do something with a neighbor, um, do something um, just that is fun that will make you laugh. If you happen to have a Easter bunny head on that you can do that you know makes you laugh, um, the Bible tells us that uh, that Easter does uh, the laughter does the heart uh, good medicine. And so anyway, this is just distracting at all? No, not distracting I don't at all. Be distracting. Yeah. This is live TV. This is live. Yes, and it's not even TV. It's we. It's live Facebook, but sure, there you go. Um, and then lastly, um, for spiritual, like, um, you know, how do we engage spiritually? Because we're not just physical beings, we're not just intellectual beings, we're not just emotional beings, but we are spiritual beings. Um, one of the things that I do, Kyle, that really helps me is I like to worship, I like to sing songs. Um, it reminds me of God's goodness. Um, and so um, I can't sing really well. Uh, so what I do is I go to the YouTube channel um, and you can type in whatever name of the song that you want. And I promise you it's probably on YouTube somewhere. And I just turn the volume up and I sing along and I worship. So those would be my four practical tips for physical, mental, and emotional to help us as we, as we navigate these tough times. Very cool. All right. Um, 
So just checking the chat feed real quick. Again, just want to thank everybody for participating and jumping online. Uh, we did hear that you can't share pictures in the chat, so I apologize. Some of you took the extra effort, way to, way to be uh, uh, determined, yeah. you the MVPs, and you sent some stuff in through uh, the, the messenger. And so lots of TP jokes, you know, who doesn't appreciate a good bathroom good joke? Yeah. So. I saw I saw a meme. It was funny today that says um, this was the first day of us homeschooling our children, and I need help. Uh, our kids have been on recess since 9:30 a.m. and the post was at like 4:30. So I, I thought that was pretty <laughs> yeah. funny. Yep. So. All right. Well, um, the last thing I just wanted to check in with is that uh, earlier today uh, we we put out a, a video with Pastor Paula, who is our cause and care pastor, and she's yeah. kind of helping us connect with practical opportunities both for people who need resources and help. Yeah. Um, and also for those of us who, who want to serve in this season, to yeah. be the church um, and, and how to do that. So can you just share a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think we put out information on that, but just really briefly, we just want to say, hey, um, we always say this in our services. We don't want something from you. We want something for you. Yeah. Um, we believe that for our community. We believe this is an opportunity uh, to unleash unprecedented uh, generosity in our community. Sure. And so you can give online. We have a, a line for that. You can give to um, this actual like emergency that we're kind of in right now. Yeah. Um, we'll continue to partner with our after school community, um, uh, Three Oaks. We'll continue to partner with the soup kitchen and the food pantry and through direct benevolence through the hope and other areas and so uh, you can bring food here there's some stuff online we want to point you to that but um, we want you to know that we as a church are going to be generous to our community around us yeah for sure for sure so uh, Jen's going to link to this in the comments uh, but southpointforyou.com slash care um, it's kind of a landing page for both resources for those uh, looking for help and for opportunities and uh, there's a link to give to the COVID-19 relief fund that we're gonna make sure um, 100% of that goes to directly serve yeah. our Southern Maryland community. Yeah. So thanks uh, so much for your generosity in that. Um, Anything else you want to add as we wrap it up? No, I just want to say, um, hey, listen, um, we're experimenting with a bunch of new things. And so one of the reasons that we're even having this live uh, tonight is for you to be able to engage. Uh, for you to be able to, in the chat, ask questions or share prayer requests or uh, just engage. And so, like, I don't know if, you know, if this will be a forever thing, um, but we do want you to know that we are trying everything that we can think of uh, to let you know that you are not alone. Um, and that at South Point, we really, when we say you matter deeply to God, um, I'm thankful to the tech team and the staff team yeah. and the volunteer team behind this who's helping us uh, create digital content on a regular basis. Um, it may look easy, but i got a lot of people working hard behind the scenes. And so um, we hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any feedback or ideas, you can feel free to, to leave it on there or ask questions uh, because that's what we want to do. Um, we want to be here to support you and support your family. Um, we, we know this is an unprecedented season. And so just uh, want to be a blessing to you and uh, to all of our friends in our community. Yep. Well, thanks, Pastor Maddox, for leading us well and leading this conversation tonight. Uh, you know, again, I want to remind us of the, uh, the statement that you said on Sunday that, that anxiety is the alarm to pray. Yeah. And so um, I think it'd be great if we just wrapped up our time with some prayer. That's great. Hey, let's pray. Um, hey, God, um, again, you are not caught by surprise. And so, God, we ask that you would step in and inter intervene. Uh, God, I pray that the people that um, are your people, the people that love you and follow you, those that claim to be followers of Jesus, that we would love our neighbors. God, we pray that you would protect the vulnerable, God. We yeah. pray that you protect the young and the elderly. We pray that you would protect those with... Um, um, chronic illnesses or compromised immune systems, God, that you would keep them safe. God, I pray that uh, the peace, your peace, would guard our hearts and minds. God, I pray that we would realize that you are near, that you love sure. us and care for us, God. And um, we just ask that you would do something that we couldn't have seen even in the midst of this, God. We want to be thankful, not because of the situation, but yeah. we want to be thankful, God, because we know that you are good and that you are in mm -hmm. control. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. And all agreed said, amen. Hey, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again the next time we do this.